Gerbil here, and I just want to share with you today a new infograph that I've made to try to help further spread some team building strategies and tips uh, and to help better understand the indoor speeder bike grade that seems to be a hot topic. So let's go ahead and move myself out of the way here. Let's uh, a little bit smaller. There we go. And here is the graph behind this window. So um, it's it it's a lot of stuff compressed into a small package. It's not the ultimate end-all be-all. It is focusing on team building. And I think this this could be very helpful for a lot of your guild mates out there who maybe don't you know, subscribe to uh, a lot of YouTubers or listen to Swaga content. So let me just kind of walk you through what's here overall. So um, first things first, um, it is a team building guide where I'm trying to give tips on how to put together squads that would be the most effective and I want to also emphasize, as it says here, please note that this is mostly based on the one-two approach in my recent series, whereby I mean you have one Imperial Trooper plus two non-Imperial Troopers, and the aim is to maximize stacks of evade. Now, I don't know if this is a thing or not, but I've I've seen people posting some kind of iteration of this, which I kind of like, the IM approach, which is the Imperial Trooper plus evasive maneuvers. I think it's pretty cool. So whether that's a thing or not, I'm gonna run with it. And so yes, it's Imperial Trooper basicing plus evasive maneuvers and other methods of stacking evade. Um, so of the eight abilities, I've listed over here on the left, all of the characters vertically who share these abilities. So evasive maneuvers goes down, hasty repairs, there's only four of them. Uh, for forest friends, likewise, there's only four of those. Uh, open, fire, etc. Also, I put this arrow here and I said left or right, abilities that provide maximum evade here goes to eventually no evade and then to maximum jam because jam is kind of your enemy for this methodology. You, you really don't want a lot of stacks of jam when you're building up the trooper raid. You just want shadow troopers coming out and you want your Imperial trooper to one shot them over and over again. Just pew, die, pew, die, right? So on the best, it, on the left is the best, on the right, not including the basic, is the worst for this particular methodology. So then I've got a couple here, Akbar, Chirpa, Elder, and no, this is not a matter of biasism. They are legitimately the MVPs of this event because they're the only characters that have both evasive maneuvers, which provides an AOE team buff of four stacks of evade. I think it's four per ally and then hasty repairs does I think three or I've got that reversed maybe one does three per ally the other does four per ally so between these three characters like you can literally every other turn especially if your crit chance is high just go maneuvers repair maneuvers repair maneuvers repair and in doing so your troopers pretty soon just go hit for 90 damage, hit for 140 damage, hit for 220 damage, and kill everything. So those are your MVPs. Uh, C-3PO, of course, is the one who can escape battle. And then the Omicron is down here on Scout Trooper. It's not essential, but it kind of helps. Now, below that, these are my favorite teams that I have played. And I'm ranking their damage not in maximum value, but in the percentage of achievable score per tier, whatever tier you play. And what I mean by that is like, um, take this squad right here. The mechanics are irrelevant with with the Imperial, the IM strategy, the, the, it, is, it is independent of the tier you play. If you're going in a tier one, you can achieve 95% of the score with low gear, uh, P it, uh, Chirpa Elder. If you go in at tier six and you have high gear characters, you can achieve 95% of that score, right? So we need to measure score in here by percentage of available of possibilities rather than actual damage values because that depends on your gear level, 
right? So these are my favorite teams. I'm not saying they're the best. These are just what I have been recently achieving with these. And, and this chart, I'm going to update and, and evolve it as we go. Now, over here towards the middle, I've got Meta Imperial Trooper Teams. And yeah, I mean Meta. By the way, do you all know what Meta stands for? I bet you don't. Most people don't. Meta is Most Effective tactical advantage excuse me most effective tactical advantage learn something huh so this is the most effective tactical advantage for maximizing your scores and it is so we got couples this is two characters and a lot of people are asking why do two you will actually get lower score with two characters because it's slower to build up the evasion rate but I get that most people don't have like fully fleshed out, fleshed out uh, squads uh, and all of the troopers and all the Ewoks and whatever. So running two allows you to do more runs with fewer or a smaller roster. So it would be, of course, one trooper and one non-trooper evasive unit. Now leaderships matter, as do uniques as long as it's only a speed or a percentage stat boost. There's no like assists and guard or anything like that. So pick your leader. Um, it's not essential that you run with a trooper lead and I'll explain in a second why, but like if you have Aiden, she's gonna get 35 bonus speed, 35 additional critical uh, chance and offense, and that's good because offense equals more damage dealt and you're stacking damage damage through stacks of evade, right? So more evade is more damage, more offense is more damage, and that's what you want. So you take one of these characters, and then you add to that one rebel or one Ewok with evasive maneuvers and or hasty repairs. And between those two, you're gonna be able to do a lot better than just like randomly throwing in some of this nonsense over here that's kind of worthless. Uh, the triplet, which is where you're gonna get more points, honestly. You take two non-trooper evasion units, again, evasive maneuvers, uh, hasty repairs. I think that one's open fire and then, nope, 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 this is forest friends and then open fire. I'm, I'm learning them, I'm learning them. Um, and the reason I say two non-trooper evasion units, because uh, you, you, troopers, remove their stacks of evasion. So as soon as you, you you spam out and build up 30 stacks, they take a basic, they lose it down to zero and you're starting over. So you really only do want, sincerely, one trooper per squad in the I'm strategy. So um, I've got the rebel Ewok leaders here. So you can see like Akbar is gonna give you rebels, like, like if you go in Akbar plus Han Solo, they're gonna get 25 speed and 10% tenacity, that's good. Ewok uh, Chirpa is going to give all of your allies 20% or 10% turn meter to, when they use a basic, which that's good for your Imperial Trooper, makes them a little bit faster, um, or 20% if it's an Ewok ally, like Ewok Elder or Poplu or something, and and on. You guys can read this. I know you, you're, you're smart. You can read that. But so these are the meta team methods of building a team. Now, why not just tell you what teams work? because it's not about the character so much as it's about the ability. This raid is not faction specific. It is not mix and match the perfect character. It's about mix and match the synergy of the abilities. So you want an Imperial Trooper faction ability. Oh, weird, I don't wanna, I don't wanna fill on this. Huh, interesting, yeah. Plus an evade repair unit right? It doesn't matter which one, as long as they're sufficiently fast and you can spam your abilities. Now, of course, there are some other viable teams that are not relying on this. Uh, as most of us know by now, you can solo this 2.7 million with uh, Leia. That's, that's pretty awesome. You can run a full uh, rebel squad, take one of your rebel leaders, and then add on two more rebels. And honestly, the ones I think work the best here are gonna be Wedge, but a lot of people don't have him at high relic levels or high gear, uh, followed by Akbar, followed by, um, it's a toss up, but I would go with Luke. And then if you are running Rex, Hera with Rex actually is pretty nice. But yeah, so you take three rebels and here it's all about the mechanic of their faction bonus. Whenever a rebel uses a basic, pew, 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 they repair stacks of damage on themselves so they survive longer. And if they're at maximum stacks, they start to accumulate stacks of shield. 
And so this is part of how like Leia works. You can get 60, 70, 80 stacks of shield if things are like RNG is really in your favor and you're evading a lot. So that when the enemies enrage, you can actually endure multiple hits from an enraged enemy, which means you might be able to take out one or two more uh, waves than like the troopers would. And that allows you to get a decent score. You're, you're probably not gonna max it. Also, don't forget that rebels gain more po points, actually everybody gains points when you heal. So um, there's a good opportunity for more repairs there and whenever you evade. But yeah, rebels, straight up basic. So why wedge? Because he gives you 30%, I think it's offense, so that your basic does more damage and you just basic, 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 you can kill and heal. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Now, triple Ewok attackers is actually quite viable. I was getting about 80, 85% out of this one. And I think um, I think that if you, if you manage this well, you can probably do better, but it's a tricky one. So all three Ewok attackers have this forest friends ability, which has a, a heavy hitting, timber attack it, it takes away eight stacks of timber and if your ewoks are modded with uh i think it's uh, accuracy i don't recall then they they do bonus timber damage and then it also does an aoe jam so all of your ewoks gain two stacks of jam and ewoks are like the troopers in that when you deal damage to an enemy instead of basing it off of evade they remove stacks of timber based on the evade or sorry the, the jam see this is confusing they remove stacks of timber based on the the number of jam stacks you have so whenever they kill someone with timber you gain six stacks of jam and then the next time you hit somebody for timber damage that gets added in but unlike the troopers, it doesn't get consumed. And there, folks, is where the bug is, I believe, because it should get consumed or else you will never get a difficult enemy. And in CG's forum posts, they actually say it gets consumed, but it doesn't. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for that as an update. So yeah, timber damage works best at low tiers though, because as you go up to the higher tiers, it's harder to get those timber kills and the enemies heal themselves at a pretty quick rate. So it's it's a bit challenging. Um, another one that's, uh, it is all rebels again, also works best at lower tiers is um, Luke with Captain Rex and, and Chewie because all three of these allies have divert attention, which has an AOE distract ability. So you open up, you spam the AOE distract. And again, if you have the mods, like stats that boost distract and off the top of my head, I don't remember which one it is. I think it's potency. I can't recall, but I think it's potency. Um, so if their potency is high enough, you distract them with the AOEs and you can kill both of the starting uh, scout recruits in three hits, I think, depending on the level. You just go like distract, 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 psh, they both die. And that's pretty cool. That's just pretty fun to, to do that. And then jamtastic. So, Lagre and Stormtrooper are the only ones, the only characters that have Jam the Comlink. And if the Jam honestly got consumed, this would be a really, really good squad, but it don't. So it, it's, it's fun, it's viable. So like over here, I got like 86% with them at tier four or five, I think it was the 1.2 million damage. So I got over a million damage with them. Um, the way it works, is you're combining the the trooper uh, evasive maneuvers. So Lagre sends out, not Lagre, uh, Tebow, he's got, where is he? He's got evasive maneuvers as does Lagre. So you're gonna stack up a whole bunch of evade on, on your two Ewoks. And then the stormtrooper goes pew, die. At the same time, these two, uh, Lagre and Tebow, they jam the comlinks, stacking up a whole bunch of jam on themselves so that when they basic, they go pew, die from timber kills, which gives them even more jam. So if CG decides that jam is supposed to actually be consumed, as they said, 
this squad right here could very quickly become a meta squad, like a really, really awesome meta squad. Yeah, sorry, these two jam, these two evade. Jam, evade, jam, jam, evade, evade, jam, 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 die, 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 boom! Oh no, here it is. I got 1.56 million out of 1.8. That's not bad. Not bad indeed. So then some basic mod tips are down below. Fundamentally, you can ignore most of the statistical rework nonsense. Um, offense and speed is what it really comes down to. Yes, speed, I promise, I promise, I promise. People keep asking, why speed? Because the enemies heal. So you need to kill them before they heal, right? If, if you gotta hit them five times for 20 damage each to kill somebody with 100 life, five times 20 is 100, but they take a turn in between those attacks and heal, now you gotta hit them six times. And every turn you take increases the enrage. So you wanna kill them before they heal. So speed is number one. Offense is number two because all of the IM methods, Imperial Trooper Evasive Maneuvers, plus the Rebels, um, work on kills through basic. I, I, even, even a lot of kills will come from the basic straight up Ewok squads. So yeah, you want a whole lot of offense and speed. C-3PO, people are overlooking this one for sure. Uh, he's an attacking unit in this raid, which means you you absolutely want offense on him and a lot of speed. So you, you probably do want to remod him to max out your uh, your raid runs, especially if you're gonna spam him, use him over and over again, hoping for that escape, then go ahead and slap on some like, I don't know, slicker mods on him or or a Chupio mod set or something that's got a whole bunch of offense on him. Like personally, I would put, I, I don't know why, but my fifth brother is my fastest character. He's got like, like a hundred, like the speed mods alone, every single one was like plus 27 speed, plus 27 speed. It's, I don't I don't know why that happened, but so I just, I would put my, my fifth brother mods on him um, and just run with that super high speed. And then finally, if you wanna try out some of these more um, unique s squads over here with like forest friends, divert attention, jam the comm links, then you probably do want to consider modding those teams properly for it, which means for the timber kills, you want more crit avoidance. For the distract kills, yeah, there it is, potency. And for the side swipe kills, you want accuracy arrows. But overall, overall, it is seldom, seldom worth the trouble to go through that remodding process. Just you know, mod all your characters in the game mostly, mostly for speed, and then you'll you'll probably be happy with this. I mean, like really, it's uh, it's not. I don't think that there's much that needs to be remodded. Anyway, where can you find this graphic? It's in my Discord, and I've pinned it in my gathering place, which is the main chamber. I've pinned it in my infographic channel, and I've pinned it in the raid channel, the speeder bike raid channel. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope you get something out of it. As I get some feedback on it, I'll update and I'll put new versions in the Discord. So folks, thanks for watching. Please, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe button out there. Please, pretty please, pretty please, pretty please. Thank you. Um, yeah, all right, I'll catch you all later. Take care, bye-bye.